Hello and welcome to Upfront with me, Patrick Christie's. It's the show that gets your favourite sports stars locked in a room and then pretty much refuses to ask them anything about sport. And today we've got an extra special guest for you. He's played for Crystal Palace, he's played for Coventry, he's played for Fulham, he's played for Reading, he's played for Charlton, he's even played for England. You may have also seen him gracing your screens on a Saturday morning as part of Sky Sports News coverage. Hello, John. How are you? John Hi, Salaka, pleasure. ladies and gentlemen. Absolute pleasure to have you here today. Thank you for having me. So you get the gist of the show, all right? We're going to ask you a little bit about sport, but I want your views on some other stuff as well, mm. all right? So first and foremost, thank you very much for joining us today. I want to know, straight off the bat, who was the biggest hard man that you ever played with? Well, I know who I, he thought he was. I mean, Vinnie Jones was an absolute thug. He was an absolute thug. I mean, I hated Vinnie Jones, to be honest. I, you know, as a, you know, we played at Sellhurst. And if you ever watch Gareth Southgate, you look at his nose. He has got a broken nose. Yeah. We, so we're coming out of the tunnel. Wimbledon, Palace, Wimbledon, John Fashionu, Scales. They've got all the boys. And, and Vinnie Jones is right at the top. And he says to Gareth, he says, Oi, schoolboy. You're getting that. <laughs> I, I promise you, five minutes into the game, Gareth is getting stretched off. Giddy Jones has come across him. I mean, before the game, he came up to me and he went, Oi, Solarco, you're going home in an ambulance. I looked at him, Really? What, what is this? Yeah. It's, a, it's a circus. But he meant it. I mean, he was genuinely nasty. And he would try and, you know, he swiped at me a couple of times, but you try and stay out of his way. But he was. Um, he was a proper nasty man, but look, I, I caught the end of Soonis, I caught the end of Jimmy Case. Um, look, Graham Roberts, uh, you, had, you, had a, you had a few guys um, trying to think of the, the Leeds team. Millwall, Herlock, Stevens. I mean, Stevens, right back. I'm 18 years old at the Den. You know, yeah. tea on your hot tea all over you. <laughs> you know, you're talking about the lads going to Bulgaria. You know, yeah, don't yeah, yeah. anything. Going to the Den, going to Ellen Road back in those days. You know, you would get some proper racial abuse and, and tri tri you know, sorry, what's it, Keith Stevens. Yeah. You know, he'd genuinely say, I, you go, for, I'm going to break your legs. Really? You know, but arguably, I mean, the biggest nutter, Mark Dennis. Right. He was left back, okay? I think the lad got sent off more times than anyone in, 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 in football ever in the top flight. So he's on our team. It, we, we're teammates. So we're doing pattern of play on a Thursday. And... You've got Stan Collymore on the right, I'm on the left, and then Mark Dennis is left back. So Stan, Stan, like, swap over. So I go and play right wing for a little while. And Mark Dennis is looking, I went past him a couple of times, and he says, you do that again, I'm going to break your legs. And you, he meant it. Yeah. He genuinely, <laughs> they're like, Stan, let's, let's swap back. But he's uh, crazy. I mean, you've got yeah. some proper nutters in football. And um, you just got to be careful. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a man's environment, and you've got to look after yourself and... You know, luckily, when I was a kid, I could run really fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, fantastic. Now, you just mentioned there, actually, the, the whole Bulgaria thing, right? Now, I know it's, uh, it's, it can be a really difficult issue to talk about, obviously. But f for me, I think it's about time that we came up with a bit more of a novel way of, of solving this kind of stuff, right? Okay. Now, I'll be honest with you, I propose snipers. Okay. okay, I just think that's, that's one way. It's a, it's, okay. it's a solution. Yeah. Have you got? I, I in, like that. In I your see. opinion, how do we just just get it out of the game? Just rubber it's bullets. Just oh, well, like, rubber, whatever. Fine. You know, you you go for the Nazi salute. Yeah. You know, just, a bit whoa, whoa. Yeah. And then keel over and then keel wake over, up in a in a go. cell. Yeah. Yeah. Look, you know, I'm old school. I mean, I'm I'm 50 years old. So you know, I grew up in an era where there was a lot of racism, skinheads, and you know. And, and I've seen it get better and better. And it seems to have really come back with it's a weird, vengeance, isn't it? vengeance, but it's never gone away. And some people, it's lack of education, um, it's really bravado. Uh, I don't know if you know, some of these guys you know, haven't been out in the country. You know, they've had a drink, yeah. they're with their boys. You know, whether you call them the ultras, they all wear their black hoodies and you know, sort of, I'm so hard. And you know, they, they try and be something. Some, some identity of something they think they want to be. They just lost souls and need educating and getting together. But in the context of where we are now, I think in a workplace, in society and in sport, it just is totally unacceptable. And, you know, there should be long bans. Okay. They should be ejected if seen on the CCTV on the day. Um, We've got our own issues here. Yeah. Listen, we haven't, we, we haven't, you know, not long ago you saw the Chelsea fan on the tube, you know, get, getting abused and pushed around. So there's still a lot of Neanderthal thinking out there on, on sexism, on, on homophobia, on racism, you know, on ageism. So 
it, it's part of the society. You know, we'll mm. look back in, in decades, but there's a lot of strides to be made, and there's a, there's a lot of, um, and I think that the fact that there's so much publicity and so much outcry mm. that everyone genuinely wants to yeah. do something about it, and it's all open now. I think everyone is an all inclusive society, and I think we are arguably, I think, the best country, the best nation, because we have got a very multicultural oh, yeah. London society. You know, not as, you know, obviously London is massively multicultural and you know we're, we're very accepting yeah. in, in 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 most things and uh i think it works pretty well but it always takes there's always going to be you know a bit of friction somewhere so i don't think we should beat ourselves up too much i think the scenes we saw the other night i actually thought was so despicable so mm. disgusting but the outcry has been that bulgaria needs to be punished but all those you know, Eastern European countries, even Italy, even, you know, Spain, you know, there is that inherent racism in there and, and it's got to be dealt with and it will take time. You know, mm. there, are, there is no, um, you know, remedy. There is no next day remedy. So, look, it's been dealt with, it's been looked at and it is top of the agenda. So I think what we, the massive pluses we take from it is that it has mm. been addressed. Right, well, that's the kind of football sporting-ish stuff done. Cool. Uh, Extinction Rebellion, <laughs> they've been bringing London to a halt. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm divided in a sense where, look, I think they're doing a, a fantastic, uh, you know, thing. They, yeah. we, we, we should be more aware of our planet, you know, the way we're destroying the planet, you know, things on. And we should be trying to make a change right now, the way, the way we've used our planet. And it isn't going to be like that forever. So we need to do something now with the plastics and, and, and with the pollution. It, it's just such a massive issue. And it is about big money. It is all about corporate money, you know. When you think about China, they, they put up a super power station every sort of three or four months, don't they? You know, the way, you know, cars should go to electric. You know, we our carbon footprint should be so much smaller. And it's all about us doing our little bit to do it. Now, that I get. But if I'm... I've got a mortgage to pay. I've got a car to pay. I've got kids. And I've got to get to work. And you are... And you are... Seriously, yeah, I am going to... I'm going to have a problem with you. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to have a bit of beef. And it is getting aggressive. It is getting a problem now. And someone's going to get hurt. And I know that they're only doing it for two weeks. And I totally get all that. And I'm totally behind them that something has to be done. And awareness has to be. And, the, and in the end, I get that they have to go too far mm. to make an impact and to get people to take notice and pay attention. But if I was one of those, you know, and that's always the difficult part. You know, we're trying to get on with our daily lives. And, you know, we're trying to pay our mortgages, pay our bills, mm. and, and bring our kids up and pay our taxes. God bless HMRC. Uh, <laughs> Say so that again with feeling. And, uh, uh, no. <laughs> but I have to say, every, you know, so many people have a go at footballers, but listen, I need people out there to stop and think that they yeah. are 40 45% tax, yeah. P-A-Y-E. So they are paying a lot of tax. So when you go, oh, my God, Wayne Rooney's earning 500 grand a week or Sanchez or whoever, you know, they're paying a lot of tax on yeah. that. So, you know, a lot of that's, that's a lot that goes into the coffers. So, you know, get off their backs. Yeah, yeah fair enough. <laughs> I or, don't know if the film stars are paying all that. Or well, is Lewis, Hamilton, you, Lewis, Lewis Hamilton in, in Switzerland isn't... Or, uh, Amazon definitely or, are. You know, absolutely, you're yeah. right. Um, OK, Brexit. Brexit. Go oh, on, mate. Oh. Take it away. Please, please. <laughs> um, I hope Europe have accepted. Yeah. Do you know what I thought, right? Boris... I, I grew up with great leaders, and, and Maggie Thatcher, for me, is... I grew up in a little village where Winston Churchill was born and raised and Chartwell's up the road, and, you know, we, we sort of a proper politician, and, and Maggie Thatcher was a tough... And to be fair, it's very conservative, yeah. you know, where I was brought up in, in Surrey, and uh, in Kent, then Surrey. And obviously, I was very lucky to do a job where, obviously, you know, you had an opportunity to go and succeed, and you mm. were taxed for it, but... You know, you, you, you know I, I grew up in an England where, where if you're prepared to work and you're prepared to graft, you, you can earn money. You know, you pay your taxes. You know, I sent my kids to, to private school, me, private medical, private dentist. I never, ever relied on the state. Yeah. You know, so there's a lot of middle ground England that, um, you know, works hard, you know, want to contribute, you know, want their kids to grow up, have the best education, have the best life, you know, and they work hard and, and they pay their taxes and they go about their life and... And, and do an incredible amount for this country. You know, the super rich can avoid it, you know, by going mm. abroad and, and, and with, with whatever they do. And we've got to get together somehow. And Brexit seems to have really found a, 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 a you know, 
a division between the country, you know, and there's a, there's a lower rung who I think are just expecting everyone else to look after them. I think they don't really want to work um, and they don't really contribute too much and they expect to be looked after. This, you know, they're like this, you know, nanny state of we will give you benefits and, and really, you know, then we've got this influx of foreign, especially Europeans that come in and want to graft, want to earn yeah. money and want to get on and, yeah. you know, sending money back and they're, they're like putting us to shame putting that bottom rung to shame of like, we want to graft, we want to work. So you've got the, the hospitality sector and the, and the construction sector, you know, sort of saying we need these guys because they graft and they put a proper shift in and this is what we want. Yeah. Um, so we really need to look at ourselves. And I think as soon as we can make this decision, obviously Boris has come in. Look, he was mayor of London and he's, he's a, that kind of... I he's know. Boris, isn't he? He's Boris. Boris he's a Boris. bit of a buffoon, but he's a, he's, yeah. a, he's, a, he's a good lad. He's a bright lad. And, you know, yeah, he's a conservative. And I think he's, he means well. He's a strong lad. I think he's in a good place. And I thought Boris would come in and be able to sort out this mess because we haven't got any leaders. Yeah. You know, for me, Corbyn's a joke. I think there's no one else I can look at. You know, it's just given all the other, all the other parties uh, a foothold. Everyone thinks they want to be prime minister. Everyone's looking after themselves. Everyone's protecting whatever jobs they're on. They all seem to have six chairmanships and... They're paid by this company and pay, and, and our politics has gone to pot. Who cares about the country anymore? Yeah. So Brexit for me, I think Boris has gone and got a deal with Europe, put it through Parliament tomorrow morning. Look, we've got to agree it, move on. We are a great nation. We are a great nation. We're so powerful. We need to be friends with America, with whatever China's doing, with you know Russia are a problem. Look, whatever's going on around the world, we we need to sleep at night. You know mm -hmm. our boys, you know the bravest and, and the best boys. You know those soldiers, they stand on the wall you know, wherever, and they protect us, and we have got a great um, security system uh, here with MI6 and, mm. and the likes, and, and they protect us, and we have a lovely way of life that we've got to keep fighting for. And I think we need to get Brexit out of the way. Uh, we need to still be friends with Europe, you know, whether down the line we get back in with Europe, but what I find with it is just that it wasn't what we signed up for. It was nowhere near what we signed for. They were, they were trying, you know, sort of complicating and, and, and dominating us with our, with our, with our laws, you know, with our politics and, and with, you know, everyone wants to be here. You know, mm. who, not before, who's going to Albania? We're not going to Poland. We're not yeah. going to, we, you know, we're not going to Kosovo. No. We're not going. But everyone wants to come here and they can't all come in. We, we've got to be selective in who we come. So immigration was a, was a big thing. I don't, you know, get, was a big issue. And obviously them dominating our, our laws and, and the way we pay money to them. And I think we just want to take, I think what the people voted for was to take back, yeah. you know, our sovereignty, you know, put control back in our hands and let, let us decide what we want and how we run England. Mm. Uh, we've got a lot of friends. We've still got the Commonwealth. And, uh, you know, we just want to kick on. And I think eventually, I think we still want to deal with Europe. You know, we still want to be, and it's very important security-wise and with trade. You know, Germany aren't going to stop selling us cars. No. You know, or, 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 or construction uh, equipment. You know, everyone wants to deal with each other. We want to deal with, you know, we love France and most, you know, a lot of English people own homes in France or in Spain, in Portugal. You know, so, you know, Europe's a wonderful, a lot of people live in Switzerland and it's, it's, it's brilliant. But unfortunately, what we voted for, and I certainly did, was really to take back, back the control into our hands because certainly what we signed up in the first place <laughs> wasn't what was going on and we need to go, hey, okay, hang on a minute. Mm. We, I think we're getting a bad deal out of this. So the only way we we can do it, was to show our hands and go, right, no, we're going. And that's what we're doing. And we are hopefully gone. The day you run for Prime Minister, you've got my vote. So there you go. Have a bit of that. Right. Quick fire round now, mate. Let's All do right. It. So short and sharp, Ronaldo or Messi? Ronaldo. Who's your hero? Who's my hero? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Daley Thompson. Oh, he was sure. a decathlete, grew back. When I was a kid, 10 disciplines, could jump, could run. You know, he looked good. Even the moustache was great, <laughs> and he was funny. And he, but the, you, you know, just the athlete, just the, the 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 supreme athleticism. And he was he was only five ten, five eleven, and they had this massive six foot German guy. I will break you, you know. Dog. <laughs> 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 the day he was just like whatever. Yeah, you know, yeah. And just uh, about the part. He was the first, my first proper superhero. And he just went out there in the Olympics and smashed <laughs> it. He was like, what are you scared of? What's your phobia? Snakes. I couldn't do get me out of here. Snakes. I don't... Ah, uh, no. Yeah, no. No. I can see, I've no, sensed that. It got no, colder in here when no, you said snakes. Yeah. What reality TV show would you most like to do? Uh, get me out of here. <laughs> 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 I can't get asked every year. I can't do it. I can't. Do they ask you I just got yeah. asked to do dancing on ice. I, I can't skate. 
you know, my knee's ruined. Uh, big brother, no. Um, Wait, Gemma Collins can't skate. Can't, she gave I, it a go. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I quite fancy that that um, Love Island thing. Oh, you've, I need to work out, though. I, 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 no, I think you'd be all right, mate. You've got those the Those guys... You've got the Yeah, shot. they're fit, fit guys and girls, aren't they? Like, <laughs> fit. Right, Desert Island, you can take three items with you. You're stranded on your own in, in essentially paradise. What do you take with you? Oh, man. Yeah. You know, I'd have to take, uh, obviously, my phone, so I'd have music, Spotify and, you know, TV and yeah. stuff. What else would I take? Um, stranded on Desert Island. Oof. David Gower took a bottle of wine and a corkscrew. Uh, just one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the never ending. Yeah, the never ending. <laughs> I'll take my magic lamp. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll leave you with that one. I'll leave you with that one. Three guests, dead or alive, that you could have at a dinner party. Oh, definitely Nelson Mandela. Shout. Um, Elvis. We'd have we would have fun. Uh, um, who else am I taking? And probably yeah. Um, Oh, who else am I taking? Probably Muhammad Ali. I'm oh, taking Muhammad Ali. That's that's a party. Yeah, that's we're a party. having a good time. We're gonna. Yeah, that's not ending that. Yeah, no, we <laughs> we, we didn't go to bed. So we, you know, we put Nelson to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on, Nelson, mate. Well, thank you. Yeah, stop talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did a lot. Elvis, of get the guitar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, what's your go-to karaoke song? Oh, Robbie Williams, Angels. Mate, that's a Do you know what? Move. Whenever I try and do Whitney Houston or anything like that, or Luther Vandross, who I love, it's just they're too big. You know, Enrique, so the go-to, just easy, fun, everyone knows the words. Robbie oh. Williams, Angels. All right, first word that comes to your head when I say the Queen. Love. Oh, oh. Love the Queen. I absolutely love her. She's just been the best thing ever since she got, you know, uh, when she came in at 18. Um, and she's just been brilliant through the war. Um, and so uh, just she mucked in and she's just been the best thing and I just I just don't know what's gonna happen when she goes. I know. Just, she keeps it together. She she keeps us together, she keeps the the royal family together. She just um I just she's just such a brilliant person. I just have so much respect and love for her. John, on that note, mate, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you very, very much. That's why my England caps <laughs> on my, my special thing. <laughs> All right, ladies and gents. John Stolarko there, what an absolute hero. I tell you what, if every single person was like him, we wouldn't have a problem in this country at all, would we? This has been Upfront with me, Patrick Christie. Make sure you tune in next time. <laughs>